everybody. My name is James Robert Elliott. I'm an international best-selling author and speaker, and I'm a leadership trainer, influence trainer, and communications trainer. I want to talk to you today about a, a keynote I usually give, and I want to shrink it down to a 10-minute clever talk. It's called Build Your Own Drum. So instead of marching to the beat of your drum, build your own drum. And, and by that, I mean stop worrying so much about what others think about you. Stop worrying about people-pleasing or failure or trying to be liked or what people are going to think about you if something works or something doesn't work. Or are you, are you pleasing your, your parents or your culture or society or community? Are you pleasing them? Are you living for them? If you are, then stop it and start living for yourself. Right. Start doing the things you want to do for you. Live your own life. Make your own decisions. Right. And we all say, oh, I, I do that. I make my own decisions. I live my own life. But I would actually caution you and, and invite you to think a little differently. Think a little abstractly as you listen to my talk today, because trying to be liked is, is one of the worst ways to be liked. Right. And, and I, I was a, I was guilty of that years ago, too, after a, a pretty hard start to my life. Uh, you know, I had no boundaries. Uh, I was willing to be walked on over by people. I was trying so hard. I was trying so hard to be liked and that people uh, like me and the people please. And it was it was toxic. It was killing me. Plus, it wasn't working. That's the thing. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so many of us are trying to be like others and conform uh, to society, um, to look like others, have what others have, think what, how others think, talk about, and be interested in the exact same thing that others are. And this is a great way to kill your brilliance, right? Look at the, it is seriously a great way to kill your brilliance and your amazing gift. Think about the people who we do revere and who are some of the most successful people in the world, right? Steve Jobs of Apple, Elon Musk, Right. Uh, Sir Richard Branson of Virgin Atlantic, Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post, Oprah, you name it. These are people that are different and they stood out and they faced the onslaught of people who didn't like them. Yes, they faced people who hated them or hated on them. Right. And, and this is what you have to do. If you persevere through this, you will be rewarded. Now, you don't have to go through as much as, let's say, Ariana or, or Oprah, uh, you know, or Elon Musk went through, or let's say Tony Robbins growing up, you didn't have to go through as much as they go through. However, there is a push you'll need to go through to, to almost get out of your own way and be okay with some people not liking you. Be okay with some people complaining about you or telling you you're doing it wrong or the wrong way or that it won't work. That's okay. That's their truth. And you, you don't have to live someone else's limitations. And unfortunately in life, because of the way people you know, they don't want to feel bad, so they communicate their limitations to us, and they try to have us buy into their limitations. So avoid that. Be different. Be like these amazing people, the amazing people that, that you revere. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's raw, he's real, he drops F-bombs all the time, and people love him. He's amazing. So be different. What is your difference? How can you build your own drum and avoid conforming to anyone else? Because that is what's going to make you win, and I promise you that is gonna, it's what's going to make you fulfilled. I coached many people, some broke, some super, super rich, and there's no correlation between money and, and happiness. Yes, you can have a lot of cool things. However, there's not really a very strong correlation between, between money and happiness. Yes, you can do cool things. Yes, you can enjoy certain parts of life. However, if you aren't whole and you aren't fulfilled and you aren't good with who you are, and if you're not making money doing what you love or doing something that you feel proud of, leaving a legacy, making an impact, and something that fulfills you, it's, uh, you know, being rich can also be a very, very lonely place or being successful. And I'll air quote it. It can be a very lonely place because you're not successful. You're not happy. You may have power or money or people following you or something, but you're not really happy. So build your own drum, right? Do what's best for you. Do what you want to do with your life, your work, your relationships. Be who you want to be with. Hang out with who you want to be with. Because you're a direct reflection of the top five to 10 people you spend the most time with. So be very careful with who you hang out with and add your personal flair to everything, your life, your work. For me, I, I'm professional, but I weave in myself too. I'll, if I need to drop F-bombs or, or say, damn, this thing or whatever, I will do it. I will make emphasis. I'll make things colorful. I'll make things humorous and funny. And yes, I'm still professional. You can still be professional and add color however you do, however your color is added to you, your word, uh, your world, your work, right? The, the longest journey, honestly, you'll ever take is the journey from your head to your heart. What is it you want to do? Who do you want to be? And what is getting in your way? And when are you going to get that out of your way? When are you going to change that? 
life doesn't run on convenience or comfort. Goals and success are not achieved through convenience or comfort, right? Comfort is the death of growth and comfort is the death of success. So I'd invite you to do something every day that makes you a little uncomfortable or maybe a lot uncomfortable. Or if you come up with something and say, oh, this is making me uncomfortable. I got a little fear here or something's making you uncomfortable. There's a lump in your throat. Uh, It's something new to you. It's something foreign to you. It's something different to you. I encourage you to do it and to take that as a sign that you need to do it. And I say, every time I I come on something that that, that challenges me or I feel uncomfortable with or, or feel fearful, I know that's a sign that I need to do it. Because when I do it, I overcome that fear, first of all, and the fear won't be there in the future. If it is, it'll be much less. And B, the sense of pride of doing something that makes you uncomfortable or, or, or fearful is incredible. And the achievement and the growth afterwards is incredible. That's how these amazing people that you revere in and the leaders you see and want to be like, that's how they've done it. Right? Commit to what you want. Decide, first of all, what you want and decide for you not to please your parents or culture or society or the media or the city or friends or look good decide what you want decide and then commit to it commit to it reverend td jakes one of the highest paid speakers in the u.s he says success is not built on convenience success is built on commitment so commit to what it is you want commit to what it is you want to have and do anything be willing to do anything legal of course moral and ethical obviously be willing be willing to do anything stay up late get up early you know, a short-term pain for long-term gain, a bit of self-sacrifice for some big, big gains in the end, right? Not everyone's willing to do this. Commitment, by the way, is doing the thing you said you would do long after the mood you said it in has left you. George Zaluki, amazing speaker, George Zaluki says that because we all want to get up early tomorrow and go to the gym or get up early and start work early or do this or that or speak up or stand out or go take action. And the next day happens or the next hour happens or we get right in front of that and come up to that event or that thing that we want to do. And we're like, well, I don't really want to do this anymore. I, I want to be comfortable. I'd rather sleep in or I'd rather stay quiet or I'd rather keep doing what I'm doing. Right. And that's a death of growth. And the, re- the way around that is to surround yourself with kick ass people. Like I said, you're a reflection of top five to 10 people you spend the most time with. Get a support system. You have groups of people, mentors, masterminds, coaches, uh, other groups of people you hang out with, right? And, and, and if you need to at first, sometimes you got to be alone on your journey, right? Sometimes you have to be alone, right? And, and as T.D. Jakes also says, never let yourself get dragged down to the basement just so you can be with someone or a group or, or be accepted by something or someone and not be lonely. Be alone. Be okay being alone, but not lonely. And for love of Pete, be yourself. This is called personal power. Taking action in the face of fear, being courageous. There is no fearless. No one is fearless. There is great people, courageous people who take action in the face of fear. No one is fearless. No one waits till they feel good or it feels right or it's the right time. There is no right time. In fact, if there is the right time is now, right? And, And the other thing I want you to get is to pay whatever price your dream asks of you or you'll never get there. Your dreams and goals always have a cost, whether it's eating better or investing in a coach or a personal trainer or a course or a mentor, reinventing yourself, right? Whatever that price is, it not, it not always is money. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's energy, putting your energy and effort and time towards something. What is that price? And usually the price, just like real estate, gets more and more expensive the longer you wait. So pay the price now. I promise you it'll be far less expensive and you'll be far more fulfilled and far much further ahead if you pay that price now. Pay whatever price your dream asks of you. And have an amazing, amazing purpose. Have a strong purpose of why you want to do this, why this lights you up, right? Think about this. In, in, a, in a chase between, a, let's say, I don't know, a lion and a deer or a cougar and a deer, the deer or the, the impala on the, on the African plains often wins. The prey often wins. Why? Well, it's because the lion or the impala has a need. They have the need to eat. That's a need, right? However, the the impala or the deer, they they literally, that their purpose is to live. It's for life, right? They need to live. Their purpose is to live. The lion, uh, the lion's purpose is to eat. The deer or the impala's purpose is to live. The purpose will overcome and trump 
the need anytime. So have a massive purpose versus a want or a need. Have a massive purpose, a massive why. How does this help you? And it's okay to be a little selfish. And how does this help the world, society, some way making a difference, making an impact? Because that's going to drive you on the, on the worst days, on the gloomiest days, on the most miserable days. That big purpose will drive you. And Khalil Gibran, who wrote an incredible book called The Prophet, he says, let the money you earn be a symbol of your service out in the world. And it's so true. It's so true. Again, there's so many rich people that are depressed and miserable. Look at half the actors in Hollywood. And I'm, I want to be rich too. I'm not saying not to. It's a great thing. However, have your purpose first. Have your fulfillment first. Do what you love and the money's going to come. You've heard that before. I don't have to beat that into you. Do what you love. The money will come. Right, And when you do what you love, fulfillment, making an impact, have a higher purpose, when you get that great money and that power and that fame, you're going to be happy. You're not going to squander it or, or, or be addicted to you know, booze or drugs or, or be depressed or miserable like some rich people, some very rich, very successful people. Have no time. I'll leave you with this. Have no time for drama, for excuses or bullshit, whether it's others or whether it's your own. You either have reasons Why you didn't get something or achieve something or you have results, right? Drama drains you. Do you have reasons or do you have results? If you don't have results, give up on the reasons and say, okay, what do I need to do next? How can I learn versus, oh, it's not my fault. It's she or he or it's the government or COVID or the economy or this and that. Avoid the reasons because they're not, they're not going to get you anywhere, right? Can, can you do anything about those, those excuses, those reasons, especially if they're outside of you? No. What can you do? I didn't get the results I wanted. What can I do? What's the gap? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to to ask? Who do I need to model? Who do I need as a mentor? Right? So search for that that biggest purpose, that biggest meaning in your life. Viktor Frankl proved this in the concentration camps of World War II. Uh, Got a great book, Man's Search for Meaning. Um, Again, he proved that the biggest thing in our life isn't necessarily pleasure, not seeking pleasure. It's searching for meaning. So that's what I wanted to get out of this clever talk. I hope you have enjoyed it. Go build your own drum, march to your own beat, live your life for you, make your decisions for you, not the programming we got from our parents or our grandparents or culture or teachers or society or religion and what we have to do, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Avoid shooting all over yourself. Live for you. Be you. What do I really want? Who do I really want to be? Again, from your head to your heart, who do I want to be? Go build your own drum and go march to your own beat. Till next time, I'm James Robert Elliott. Go have your best day ever. 